Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Ron Kisen Stevenson. Tonight, uh, I would like to uh, discuss case 39 from the Blue Cliff Record. Gateways to awakening are numberless. I vow to master them all. A koan is one of the techniques that can help to be a mirror of the self. A short preface is necessary, I think, uh, for case number 39. It's called a flowering hedge. Um, There is mention in this koan of a golden haired lion. And that's kind of strange because in China at that time, there were really no lions. And and, uh, this was a total um, conceptual image that came from the Huayan school of Buddhism. What it represents is shunyata. Or more, more broadly, it represents the pure body of reality, or the pure body of the Dharma, if you will. Um, So um, the golden hairs on the lion are uh, supposed to represent the numberless beings and numberless uh, uh, forms uh, of sentient beings, whereas the lion is shunyata itself. So uh, let me read the case to you. A monk asked Yun Men, what is the pure body of reality? The pure body of reality. Well, Yun Men answered, the flowering hedge. So the monk asked in return, well, what's it like when you go on in such a way? And Yun Men said, golden-haired lion. And that's a kind of an unexpected answer. When I read it, I, the first thought that I had was that it's a very bookish answer and a very dogmatic one. You wouldn't expect to hear that. Now, obviously when he asked the first question, um, he might have expected to hear something along those lines at first, the golden-haired lion, but instead, um, when the teacher spoke, you can sense that he spoke from a sense of pure presence. And when he saw the golden hedge before him, that was the pure body of reality. And he knew that uh, the monk could understand that much. So what is it? that makes our minds strain to intellectualize things and to understand things in metaphors like this when the pure body of reality is right before us. Uh, What I'd like to do is I'd like to ask you to do a small demonstration with me. Uh, Just close your eyes for a moment or otherwise uh, just let your mind drift to the image of a golden lion. This is a golden haired lion. So knowing what you know about the golden haired lion, picture that in your mind's eye for a moment. Um, Note your feelings on that. Does it make your mind comfortable? Or if it's me, what I experienced was that uh, my mind was busy trying to understand the metaphor. I identified with one of those golden hairs because after all the metaphor, metaphor, in the metaphor, I stand for the golden hair or vice versa, it stands for me. So I was narrowly identified with one golden hair. Um, Incorporating the essence of shunyata and reflecting it back to all the others as the metaphor intended. Now let's try this again. And instead, let's focus for a moment on the flowering hedge. Maybe you can picture that. Maybe you can sense 
it in various ways, how it smells, the scent, sight, touch. Okay, so in this case, speaking for myself, how did I feel? I was, I felt more restful and my mind was wandering a lot less this time. So it seems that the flowering heads did more to draw me into presence, into the pure body of reality than all the intellectualizing did. Um, we can take this a step further. Um, imagine that we broaden our vision for a moment and we see that hedge growing around the latrine. And it's growing out of the slop of the latrines. Picture that for a moment in your mind's eye. Again, I found my mind working. Try to reconcile contrasting images. Why is that? Well, I have associations, various mental associations that align to my preferences and aversions. I think that we're trapped in a labyrinthine prison of our attachments and aversions. Uh, we really don't have an emotional desire to reconcile the flowering hedge and the dung heap, do we? What we want is for the flower to prevail. And maybe we can tolerate the other one. If we would take a picture of it, a photograph of it, how would that look? What would we focus on? What might we blur out? So what we really want desire-wise, that is, is to escape to an imaginary world of our preferences. So let's go on to the monk's second question. What is it like to go on like this? That is, what is it like when one accepts that all that one encounters as the pure body of the Dharma? When the discriminations of mind are known as mentally caused and no longer occupy our attention. What's that like? In other words, what's it like to experience the world free of that? The answer was a golden haired lion. But this is not the same lion that the monk had in mind originally, is it? The focus of attention, the perspective is a little different. Now you are the lion itself. I experience reality as the golden haired lion. And naturally I incorporate all multitudinous beings in my awareness somehow. So the transformation is a shift and a widening of my perspective. The answer to my dilemma seemed to have been sensible reality all along. The pure body of the Dharma is found in both the flowers and the dung. Somehow, um, we learn to discriminate between them as we grow up. Let's think back to childhood for a moment. As toddlers, was one of the first things you identified with animals? That was the case with me, it was the case with my daughter and many people I know. And my theory is that we instinctively recognize in them the fundamental oneness of our nature our essence, um, what we call shunyata, 
uh, we usually refer to as emptiness. But it's much more than that. Sure, it's empty of all our conceptual notions, but it's our essence, isn't it? When we adopt pets, aren't we bringing nature back into our lives, into our homes, bringing ourselves into intimacy with nature, essence? But as we're acculturated, of course, we develop this Disney-esque view of nature where we get to pick and choose which animals we like and which ones are bad and so on and so forth. Um, and like the monk, what we really want is a, a world in which all of our infantile kind of habituated preferences are catered to. Uh, we just want to escape into Habitual, habituated reality. So our habituated nature as human beings causes us to take the path of least resistance, which is why the Buddha referred to the Bodhidharma as going against the stream. So if you decide to contemplate this poem and take it to heart as practice, the turning phrase is a flowering hedge. Thank you.